Hey yo, it's your boy Fern Feather back at it again. So uh, before we jump into this kiting guide, this um rotation guide, even priestess portals are in here. It's it's pretty big. I also want to say that you know while we're going over this, there are many routes that you can take, and the tips that I mentioned in this video are not set in stone. So depending on your character, the hunter, the situation, the way you're rotating and things like that, it's all going to change. Okay? So the purpose of this video isn't to act like hard law to say you have to kite this way, you have to go here, you have to do this. It's, it's more like a guide just to help you in certain situations. So think of it as like a helpful way to get out of like a certain scenario if you find yourself there or like, you know, a tip or something like that. So remember, the number one thing that is needed to survive is game sense. Not a kiting route, game sense. That's far more important. You need to be able to switch it up and change it depending. So uh, that having been said, don't forget to switch it up if needed. You know, you're kiting a geisha. You want a tight kite. That means like circle around objects as much as you can. Say you're fighting an, an axe boy, then you want to, or like a spider, then you want to do the opposite of tight kiting. You want to spread out. You want to move away as far as you can. Just keep that in mind. Okay, so here we start off with one of the six uh, spawn positions. So there's six different spawn positions you can have in total. And here I'm just going to go over them. Keep in mind the, I'm not focusing on where the, um, the, the dungeon spawns or the cypher spawns, just where the people are spawning. So in this instance right here, please ignore the little line at the bottom. I can't get rid of it, whatever. But in this instance right here, what we have is the hunters in this area and then we got survivors all around here. So the hunter is usually gonna go to this person first or this person first. Typically I see this person. So what's important to remember is that if you're this person, don't go to this cypher. Unless, like, you're a mercenary or you really want the hunter to see you, because he's probably going to see you coming into this cypher. So the biggest um, danger we have here is this person tries to go to this console, this person goes to this console, oh no, hunter's here, oh no, this person's chasing. So if you're, like, a mechanic right here, then the best thing for you to do is to either hide, but if you hide... The hunter's gonna probably come here first, so make sure it's in a place where if he finds you, then you're able to kite. It, it, make sure it's like a place where you're not just stuck if he finds you. So you want to do that, or switch the locations with this person. For example, if you're a mechanic here, this guy, for instance, is a mercenary, then you switch positions with that guy, and then this guy will be found first, he'll kite, and then you can go over to like this um, area over here and decode, and you'll be fine. Uh, these two guys don't really have to worry. If the hunter for some reason comes to you over here, uh, then you, there's a little kiting route, which will bring you through the building, which I'll show. We can go over that later. So in this one right here, uh, the hunter's in this area. He will maybe go down here first. I've seen this a lot, especially if it's a Wu Chang or a Bloody Queen. They just whoop right over to you. Or they can come over here. And uh, this is usually what will happen. If you're in this spawn area... Uh, this is a pretty dangerous place, I'm going to be honest. There's not, like, a lot of areas to kite. This is probably your closest area, and then the two little kiting areas right over here. So if you're in this area, and for, if you know it's a Wu Chang or something and they can get here quickly, I would transition over to the right. Like, maybe go to this cipher, and then this guy goes to that cipher. Or what you can do is you can go to this cipher, and keep in mind, I have the cipher positions uh, constant right here, so there's a cipher which spawns over here. Like, there's different cipher spawns for these survivors, but what I'm saying is, like, if you're over here, then yeah, you can decode over here, but there's also a cipher that spawns really close to this guy. Don't decode that one uh, if the hunter is in this spawn position, because he's probably going to come over here in this area. There, you're not going to have enough time to get to a kiting area. So either to code here or just move over to the right. Unless you're a mercenary, in which case just do what you want because you're a mercenary. Ah, there's a fly. It's fine. If you're in a uh, two-story, just stay in two-story. You'll be fine. Unless if you're a mercenary and you're in two-story, I would leave and then just go to a different cipher because there's other survivors which could value this more. So like if you're a mechanic and you're in any of these other spawns, just go into two-story. Any respecting survivor who's in two-story will leave. Um, okay, so here what we have is this little spawn with these two things. Now, I'm going to go over the exact area specifically later, but if you're in this area, I usually throw down the pallet that's right here. I'll show you that. 
And then what you're going to want to do here, because the hunter's probably going to come here instantly, is probably just go over to this cipher, or maybe down here. So, like, you just move away. Move away from this area. This guy can go to this cipher, unless you're a mechanic. If you're a mechanic, or if you're, like, a prisoner, or you're just someone who doesn't want to be found first, this is what rotating is, by the way. Rotating is not being found first by the hunter if you're a weak character. Then what you can do... Wait one second. Then what you can do in this situation is you can hide in this little area back here. Be careful though, um, you know, you don't want the hunter finding you. And if you hide back here, there's not a lot you can work with. Don't run into the hunter if this is your spawn position. If you see that guy down here, uh, don't go over here because the hunter will find you and that's not fun. So either hide or what you can do is what I was saying, with, which is this guy goes over to like this area. He throws down that pallet for you. He doesn't have to do, like, maybe he won't, but if you're playing and you spawn here, throw it on that pallet to help your boys. And I'll explain you that exactly later why. But then you come into here, you see the hunter, you hear his heartbeat, vaguely coming, you throw down this pallet. The hunters use are forced to come to you from the window, the front, or the pallet. If he breaks the pallet, you vault the window, get a speed boost if you have it. If not, that's fine. You go to the pallet this person threw down, you get a speed boost, and then you can make it into hospital. And there's a whole kiting route in hospital, which I'll show you later. Uh, but then it, that just gives you the kiting route. If the hunter, for some reason, he comes here, oh, you threw those down, he tries to come to you from this side, then you just go and then you, you make your way, like maybe use a pallet or something to get to this area, which is probably the best kiting place on this game, you know, in this part of the map, at least. Uh, if you're over here, you're fine, you know, don't worry. And then you're fine, don't worry. Just remember though, um, if you spawn up here and you're not like a, a if you're a mercenary or a strong person, just leave, like go out the back or go out the window and go over to like the cipher or something and give this guy this the cipher. If not, and like if you're like the stronger character of the two, then just leave and let the, let the weak person have hospital, okay? The weaker you are, the more you should give them hospital. So for this next spawn right here, uh, this guy is probably going to be targeted first. So if you're Hunter, you just come over here. What mistake survivors will make a lot of the time is if you're this guy, they'll go to this Cypher. And the big issue with that is the Hunter comes over here. If you are a weak character and there's like, and this is a mercenary, say this is like a, a Seer. Now like the Seer is not a weak character, but in comparison to the mercenary he is, the hunter's gonna start chasing you when he comes over here. So if you are a weak character and you know this person's a strong character, what should happen early game, by the way, is that you guys ping your location. Ping your location. Use those little in-game chat messages so that you can see who is where. And if you see that this guy is like a stronger character than you and you're this guy, then like maybe go into hospital and then just like come out to go to a different cipher. You don't want to be found first. Just don't be found. If you're facing a bloody queen or a dream witch, this is very important because for them, it's not a question of can I outkite them? It's a question of when will they outkite me? Because they are very good characters and you can be one of the best players in the game. But if you have someone of equal skill playing that type of hunter, they will beat you. So the best way to defend against that is just not getting found. We call that rotating. So if you're facing a mercenary, then that's just going to make it 10 times harder for them. So you want them to be fighting the mercenary. Now, that having been said, if um, you're like a stronger character or someone pings and it's the difference between like a, a seer and a, a priestess, like pretty similar, depending the situation, then yeah, you know what? Maybe it doesn't matter. You can go take that cipher. Just keep in mind, if you're a weak character, don't go out to where the hunter is going to go. The hunter's probably going to go over here. If you're weak, don't go over here. That's, what's, that's what you want to know. Um, that having been said, this guy's fine. This guy should just go to that cypher, that cypher. Swap it up a bit if needed. Um, but that's the big part for here. And here we have group five. So for group five, the hunter is nine times out of ten going to come over to this area around here. If you're the guy... I would throw down the pallet. The one issue with this side is that the hunter, if he sees the pallet, he may break it first. So that's not like 100% mandatory in this scenario. Like you should break the pallet. And keep in mind, if the person spawns over here, the hunter's coming from this way. If the person spawns more like in this area, the hunter is probably going to be coming from this direction from what we've seen earlier. So in this situation right here, you want to maybe throw down the pallet. You, this is like less certain than the other situation. But 
yeah, you can still do it, and then you can still do the vaulting thing and come through here, but uh, this situation, this guy should probably go to this cipher, this guy goes to this cipher, and this guy can stay at this cipher if he's a good kiter and he wants to use that route, or what he can do is he can, like, hide in the back area, oh no. can do is he can hide in the back area and then you know just wait for the hunter hope he doesn't find him if you hide please 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 make sure it's in a place where if the hunter finds you you can kite that's important or like at least you have an ability or something to get you out of that situation um and then that's it for this area these two people you're fine do what you want to do all right and now we're at uh the sixth position so for this one, it's um, he'll the hunter will usually come to here first. This situation, you do not have this pallet thrown down. Whatever. If you are a weak survivor and there's no one over on this side and you spawn here, that probably means the hunter is going to come through this way. So what you want to do in this situation is come to this area or hide if you're weak. Now, if you're a mercenary, as I keep saying... Don't really have to worry about it too much. The hunter may try to chase you, but they're just wasting time. That's good for you. You want the hunter to chase you if you're a mercenary because you can survive. But if you're like a weird character, then in this situation, you want to hide in like a corner, especially maybe over here because the hunter can't really see you from that angle at first. Or you want to go to this area and kite. Now, the only problem is that these two survivors over here are, if you come over here, you're putting them in danger as well. So if they're a weaker character, there's a problem. But what I like to do, this is more of a personal thing, if I'm in VC with my friends or I'm with people I know, which is kind of hard in Legendary because you don't know everyone. Eh. But um, what we'll do is we'll have this person like go down to this cipher and this person go down to this cipher. And so this guy, if the hunter chases him first, has like as long as they need to use this area. They can just use it for, for how long they need. There's no problem. Kite all they want. And then they can like maybe make their way inside the building and then kite inside the building. It's great. It's great for them. They have as long as they need. But if you're not in VC, that's maybe not realistic. So if you're one of these people, um, you want to be careful where you go. Especially because if you don't know the person, then this guy will probably take this cipher instead of going. It's a little bit more running early game, but sometimes I think running's better. But again, if you don't know the people, then that's maybe not going to be feasible. It may be better to hide, depending on the situation. It depends. Like, don't forget, if it's a Mad Eyes, for instance, then hey, maybe you should go with the locker first. It sounds stupid, but it works, you know, against a Mad Eyes. So, this is the kiting route for every single option on Hospital. Now, like, there's a few things which I don't cover, but this is the general makeup of, like, most of the kiting routes overall. Don't worry if this looks like a whole bunch of heebie-jeebie blobble stuff, because at this point for you, it, it if you're, like, a newer player or if, you, you know... Even if you are an experienced player, the way I drew it is quite ugly, so you may not understand this at all, and I get that. It's okay. I'm going to walk you through it, and then I'm going to show you like actual examples like, oh, if you spawn here, here's what you do. And again, keep in mind, this is just examples. This is not law. For example, if I'm a priestess and I'm like over here, well, I don't have to go through this whole kiting route. I can just portal into the building, you know? Your abilities will matter. If you're facing a geisha, then hey, instead of like trying to zip through this as fast as you can, maybe you want to stay in one area for as long as you can. We call that tight kiting. It depends the hunter, it depends the situation, it depends where you are. That's always important. This is not a law. Uh, but to explain the generals of this blob for you right here, um, it all kind of connects together, and the goal is just to survive for as long as you can. So say, for instance, we're starting in Shack. All right, the hunter's coming from this direction. Just as an example, he could come from this direction, but say he's coming from this direction. Well, I usually throw this pallet down. So I vault the pallet. That gives me the ability to come over here where I can kite for a bit. Then I have an option depending on where the hunter is. Uh, I can either try to go down here and then go to this little area and then stall for enough time to get inside the building where I can try to survive. Or I can use this like window to get over to an area over here where there's two pallets. I throw it down and then I go over to this area where there's more pallets. And then eventually I come to this area and I go through and I can either get in back inside the building or go to this little kiting area in the corner here. And then, you know, you can go through that loop. Uh, I will say, if you come over to this area, then you want to try to get inside the building or go over here. So, like, if you're coming, you can go down these lines either direction. So, if I spawn near this cipher machine, then I you go, like, through the yellow line. I follow this kiting route over here. 
But if I'm over here, then I follow the kiting route over here. It's, it's either direction. And when I say follow the kiting route, that's very loose because, you know, a kiting route is like, do whatever you need to do in your situation. This is not law. But yeah, so um, you come over here, you'd get inside the building. If you get inside the building, then you have the option to do the building loop, which means you go outside the right window over here, and then you can usually loop around this area two times, depending on if you have broken windows or not, and other stuff. And then you come out, and then you can kite in this area, or you can go over to this area. Now say, now say we were over here, and we didn't go down this path. We went down this path with that little kiting area down here, which brought us into the building. Well, if we did that, then we go up the stairs here, and we kite on the top, we fall through the hole, we throw the pallet down, and we're usually able to make it eventually over to this area back at the windows again and then pardon me my throat hurts a bit and then you vault the window you do the the double loop thing you go through and then you can go follow the line this way where you you leave you vault out the window and then you go to the kiting area over here the kiting area over here and you can come back in or loop around this way see it all kind of loops together and um i know this may not make a lot of sense I'm going to show you actual video clips, for instance, um, one, if this will make sense here, where this is like going to be the setup. The hunter's like in this area, and then the survivor's going to be near this cipher. What would you do in this instance? This is going to be the next clip I show you. Uh, I will say my hunter is going to be coming more from this direction just because we were playing with bots and we didn't happen to get that spawn. So I just said, you know what, snap it. Uh, I'm going to ask my friend to walk over here and I'm just going to move myself to the general position so if it doesn't look like completely authentic yeah, that's why um but the general explanation is still there and from this area if i can get my other thing ah, ah, that's fine in this area we have the option to kite this way and this way as you can see and i'm going to show you like how we work through that and how you can do that to best help you not mess up as terribly as i do all the time let's go So here I'm walking over to my friend to the spawn. It's going to be the statue spawn and the hunter is going to move over to the corner to simulate uh, the, the general spawn area uh, of this like kiting situation. So first of all, I throw this pallet down if I'm decoding here early. I always do that. Uh, that's very important for a kite because see the hunter gonna, is going to come from like that direction. I take that vault and then I loop around. And it depends how many times I can loop this area. The hunter breaks the pallet, so I go straight to the window. If he didn't break the pallet, I could have looped there more. And see, I use that speed boost. I get over to these two pallets. I usually throw them down instantly, generally, but I'm just, like, messing around with my friend a bit. But I, I usually throw them down instantly. But yeah, so I kite through here. The hunter's like, breaking those pallets, and then I go over to this kiting area. And my goal is to make it, um, also, yeah... I get hit down, but my goal is to make it over to the back corner where there's those two little kiting routes to get me inside of the building. I also will say, I am terrible against a lizard, so that's one thing, but the lizard is bringing me to the area. My goal is to get to the area he's standing right next to. See this area where there's that spray and there's those pallets and I can kite around there for a bit. Uh, and that's for that area. So right here, I'm also in a custom match. I'm just trolling with a survivor in my hand. So say the hunter's coming from that direction, you go to where you have your pallet thrown down. You vault it, and then you're able to either go out to the window, which I showed, or loop around in mind game. So this is going to depend on whether or not the hunter breaks the pallet over there and what ends up happening. So, uh, for instance, say they break that pallet, then that's going to give you time to go to the window. If they don't, then you're going to be able to keep looping around, and you don't want to go straight to the window in that instance. It it also depends based off of the hunter. And then you can loop around eventually, make your way over to this pallet. I have a bot on right now, so it's acting a bit weird. So forgive me for that. But yeah, then you want to kind of mind game throughout this area. And kite around, loop, uh, try to be smart. It's a bit weird because I have the hunter with the bot. But just ignore that for now. You really just want to mind game. That back pallet is not super important, but those two front ones... Um, the one that she broke and the one that I vaulted that is directly in front of me. So, like, that one that I broke and that one right there are the two really important pallets. And you can mind game between those two pallets waiting for the hunter to break them for a while. So, you enter that area 
and then the hunter's following you, and then you have this pallet, you want to throw those two down instantly, and eventually you can vault it and make your way over to here if you have the opportunity. And if the hunter comes from that side, like she breaks the pallet, which I just vaulted right here, then you can use the other pallet to go back to the first kiting area um, where you just left from. So it really depends from which of these sides are coming, and you just want to mind game between these two areas. If they break one pallet, go to the other side. If they break the other pallet, go to the other It's pretty simple. And then you make your way over to that area. So there's not really much to add for this part, except for the kiting, which would connect onto this, but I can show a little bit of that later. I just want to start off with, when you're in the spawn, what you should do. So this isn't as common as a spawn for the hunter to go to, but still important to know what to do. I personally throw down that pallet every time, but that's just me, it depends. Also, don't go to that spawn, the one I'm running towards. Never go to that one early game, never like decode that cipher is what I'm saying, because there's nothing to help you kite, you, you're not going to have time to get to a pallet. Decode this one early game, and don't decode that one until you know y y it's safe to do so. So you're kiting, and then if the hunter comes from that direction, you want to go towards this area where you have these two pallets, and then I'll show you the kiting route from here later. But generally, the hunter is not going to come from that direction. He's going to come from where he's standing right now. So that's like further down that way. So if he comes this way, then you want to see him in the distance and you want to start running early and get to these two pallets. Uh, I already broke one of them because I was kind of kiting around earlier, but you want to loop this area and then make your way inside of the main building where there's another kiting route that connects that you can use. And here uh, it's showing you like be adaptable. You don't always have to use that loop. See, I'm a perfumer, so I use my abilities to help me. So you got to know how to go backwards on these routes, how to go forwards, how to switch it up if you have a portal, how to, how to use your portals. Exactly like that. So basically, try to be adaptable. So if you're in the spawn area near the shack, this is... um. A pretty basic place and it has a very interesting kiting route to go. So the hunter is usually going to come to you first. What I do is I always throw down the pallet inside of the shack instantly so the hunter is either forced to go through the window, the pallet, or the front as I mentioned earlier. So he vaults through the window. The survivor is going to this pallet which we didn't have the option to throw down yet in this instance but that's fine. It's just showing you that you can still be adaptable and make your way through there using your abilities or whatever you have. See? So normally you would want to go inside the building, but that pal's not thrown down, you don't have the option, but you don't need to. Instead you go through this kiting route, which brings you backwards over to the other area which we show on the map. So you get over to two pallets over here, and then you want to mind game some. So uh, we loop around a bit, and I'm a trash axe boy, but, but it's fine, it's fine. So. Also, forgive me, um, it's like 2 a.m. and I was listening to ASMR with my friend Giga. Uh, it was relaxing Karen coronavirus ASMR, I'm not joking, it was a long story. Uh, it's fine. Uh, yeah, so we loop around for a bit. You just want to force the hunter in a bad situation. I used Blink there and I, I got a hit, but um, my friend was able to get over to the second area, which is over here. And see how much time we're wasting? So this is what is called being adaptable. Normally you want to go inside the two-story building from that route, but they saw that that was not going to happen, and we ended up kiting for a bit, and we lasted for a very long time. So that's how you adapt through that area. So here's the same kiting route, um, my friends over here. And for this instance, I'm also going out the window, and I'm vaulting, and it shows you that I want to go towards this direction. I am trolling around a bit, but you get the point. So usually you want to throw down this pallet early game if you have the ability. I talked about that earlier. And so this is going to help you because, you know, you're decoding in uh, the little shack building over here if the cipher's here. You, I personally throw down this pallet as soon as I hear a heartbeat. And I feel like that's a good time to do it. So you're just, you're doing your decoding, you're vibing, you're chilling, and you want to see which direction the hunter comes from. I see his red light always coming to the window. I go towards pallet. Oh, no. If the hunter ends up going to the window and not the pallet, then you vault the pallet and you make your way towards Grand Kiting Area, which is that big kiting area where there's a, like a bunch of pallets and stuff. I'll show a little picture of it. Oh, he's going to the pallet, then I go towards the window. Eventually they break the pallet, so I'm going to use this to get me over to the pallet over here, and then I'm going to get that speed boost, and then I'm going to vibe my way back into hospital over here. This is a really good route for me to take. And it may not look like I have time to get to that window, but I will. It also depends on the hunter and how fast they are, though. 
So I take that jump, and then I have speed boost up, luckily for me, but even if you don't, you're probably going to still be able to loop it at least one time. It, it kind of depends. You got to be careful, and if you can't make it, you want to, like, branch off. But luckily for me, I, I'm just being careful here. I, I take that hit, but it's okay. So I take that loop, and I'm able to even go around again because I use my perfume. And that's using your abilities to help you. So you loop around this as much as you can before it gets too dangerous, in which case you don't want to die, you want to be careful. So see, I, I switched directions here now that I got hit, and then I go over towards the two pallets in this direction. Um, I get hit by the jump because I'm really bad with lizard, but either way you would eventually make it towards this area over here. If you were able if I didn't use the perfume inside two-story, I would have hopped outside the window and would have made it towards this area. And then I would have been able to kite from here, which I will show in a little bit that route. So here's an example without the hunter. I vault the window and then I do the loop. Um, I'm just playing with cowboy right now. So remember if there's a hunter, I may have to switch it up like I did with the perfumer. So I go around, I uh, go over to the window, I vault, depending if you have broken windows or the other stuff. You can usually loop that one to two times. It depends. So then after you get out that window, you want to go over to this pallet, assuming you're not like switching up your kiting route because of something the hunter does. So you want to go here, throw down these two pallets, force the hunter to break one. If the hunter breaks that pallet, then you go towards that kiting area over here, towards that general area. Now if the hunter, uh, and then yeah, from here you want to go over to those two pallets and then back inside the main building. Pretty simple. Now, if the hunter breaks this pallet, then you want this one in here. Then you want to uh, vault this pallet and then go over to this kiting area if you're able to make it. That is, like, if you mind, it depends. Then you throw that pallet down and then you wait for them either to break the pallet or vault the window. If they vault the window, then you use that pallet. You go back towards the kiting area before, or you just like loop around here as much as you can until you either have the opportunity to go back towards this area. Or you have the opportunity to like vault the window and then get back inside the main building like this. Now in this time, I'm going to be honest, you'll probably be hit once, at least, depending on the survivor's hunter's ability. But, um, pardon, it's still pretty good. And then once you're here, you can go back and uh, jump outside this window or the other window. And then you can use these kiting areas the same way, like repeat them. It, it, that is if you didn't use all your pallets, you know? So I showed you all the kiting around from the shack spawn, but what if you don't want to kite? Because sometimes you can just hide. Sometimes hiding's better. Not all the time, be careful, but sometimes hiding's better. Well, if you're in the shack spawn, you can hide in this little corner over here. I like it because there's pallets. So if I need to go kiting, if say, oh, that lizard found me, I can use those pallets and try to kite a little bit. I also see people hide here a lot, which I would be careful about because the hunter's probably taking tinnitus, so they're gonna know if you're hiding, so you better be hiding good. And the hunter can check back in that little area, and if he does check back there and sees you, you're dead, like there's nowhere to kite to, or at least you're gonna get a guaranteed hit on you. So I'd be careful. So this spawn right here is definitely one of the more dangerous ones because you don't really have a lot to help you in the scenario if like the hunter comes to you and in certain situations the hunter will like to come to the spawn so you got to be careful. Um, you do have the kiting place to the right and that little area to the left but the issue is they're a bit too far away if you're decoding and you see the hunter coming because you got to get there fast and you don't want to run into the hunter. Now you can transition to the right if you see him coming but honestly as I mentioned earlier when I was showing the, the general routes and stuff, I would just get out of here in the first place and just decode the cipher near an actual kiting area. And then, unless you're a mercenary or you know something like that. Welcome to Grand Kite, my dudes. Uh, Alright, first of all, I call it Grand Kite. I know other people don't. I know there's other names for it, but this is what I call it, so eh, whatever. So say you come over here, um... You have two options, the pallet, the window. Let's just vault the window here as an example. You want to loop this area around. So I come back over here, I go through the pallet. I don't throw it instantly. Leave that pallet up as long as you're able to. I vault again. Now, here's the thing. 
you can actually see the hunter's red light when he's standing near that pallet and on the other side, and you can see if he's vaulting or not. And you really want to mind game that. If he comes towards you, vault. If he tries to like loop back around on you, don't vault. But be careful because if you see the hunter standing still near there, that probably means that they're gonna blink. And if they're gonna blink, you need to move. You can usually feel if a hunter is going to blink when they stand still. So you leave that area, you come over here, you have this pallet, and you have like the little window over there. So um, if the hunter comes, you throw that pallet down and he's breaking it, then you can make your way back to that little loop again. But if the hunter, say, doesn't break this pallet and they come to the other side, then you can loop around, use the window, or you can use the pallet, whatever you need to just keep kiting for, you know, a little bit, for as long as you can. Uh, that and if you're able to you can make it over there and then over to shack now this area is broken i'm gonna say <laughs> i hate it so much as hunter but it's really good especially when you can make it to these two pallets now from this main area grand kite you can make it to statue to um the the, the not tent why am i the shack or to these two pallets i'm bad with words forgive me so, you know, we make it to these two pallets, you throw them down however you need, you, you just try to mind game it here, you want a mind game. The hunter comes one way, you go the other way. And by utilizing this area, which is not the best area, you gotta be careful, you're able to make your way from like over there back into the um, two story. You can get into two story, but you gotta be careful. Be careful, because he can hit you here. So. We come on in, and then you have the option to go vault that window right over here. If the hunter's a bit close to you, that might be the better option, and you can make your way to the pallet, and then kite your way around through that direction. Now, uh, the other option is you can go up the stairs if the hunter is like breaking the pallet and you have a little bit of time. This pallet right here, by the way, uh, never like kite into the building and throw that pallet down unless you're literally desperate. There's better ways to do it, just don't. So you come up the stairs. And here's what I like to do. Fall down this hole, throw the pallet down instantly. I know it's broken, but I would run through it, throw it down behind me. That's because it forces the hunter to walk around, giving you enough time to vault and loop. Or if the hunter doesn't break it, that gives you enough time to loop as well because he has to walk a few extra steps. And if you're able to go back up that hole and fall down again, and you have broken windows, I mean, not knee-jerk reflex, that's the word, then you get a little speed boost. It's like a delicious little you know little taste on the tip right there so and then you come out over here and if you're able to eventually you come to the window you vault out and then you do like those loops I showed you earlier so I know like this is a pretty long clip uh, but it's because it's it's good it's good to, to go through it and I'm gonna have like an actual gameplay later where I show uh, some of these things and again you would have thrown that pallet down so when you fell through you get that speed boost delicious So as you probably read from the title, here's a little example of those kiting routes. Uh, what a preface, I am a terrible violinist. Like, I'm so bad. I've played them like twice. But the, the, the kiting, like the routes themselves are still the same. So forgive me for this. So she goes through those pallets and she uses the window. Because she has broken windows, she's able to do that and make her way towards this area. She's able to just go like straight through towards that direction. So... Uh, I'm going to tell you right now, I'm also a very, I t mentioned I'm a bad violinist, so I kind of use a blink here. Yeah, <laughs> it's because I'm really bad, but it's fine. Um, and here we kind of do a little bit of mind gaming, and by we, I mean her mostly. It's fine. But yeah, so I, I try to land my music notes, which I can't land because I'm trash. And when she goes to towards one palette, I go towards the other direction because I'm afraid... If she, like, if when she passes this pallet right here, I don't want to get stunned, so I'm trying to be careful about going through. And then she stuns me anyway, because I'm trash, but that's besides the point. Um, and she's able to make her way over towards the little two pallets in the back, and which will later bring her into the main building. So she gets back here. I miss uh, another set of my notes. I will tell you, I miss all of them, except for one of those five music notes. That's fine. Uh, she forces, uh, she, yeah. She throws the pallet down, that's the words. She makes it inside, and keep in mind, she's a seer, so she can be a little bit reckless. She has a birdie boy. So I come on in, I start following her, she yeets her bird, and I'm like, oh darn. I actually tried to hit her with the notes there, because I don't want to hit her and then get attack recovery. 
uh, by the vault, vault especially. And then she uses that to get to another one of these close kiting areas that's really close to the main building. And uh, she vaults the window. We do more mind gaming. Another thing that's important to mention, we kited in this area earlier and she didn't throw down the pallet. So that's why she came back here because she remembered I didn't throw down the pallet so I'm able to use it. And then she came over here because she had a bird and she, she knew that she could get some use out of that there. And here we go. She finally throws down that pallet. She probably should have went back to vault it instead of the window, but it's okay because I'm trash. And then that we get like the worst pop in the world. I can't tell if I actually hit her or not, but it's fine. I mean, actually, I didn't hit. Yeah, I didn't hit her. But I mean, like, I can dream. I'm so bad. <laughs> but yeah, oh, it's fine. You, you see the kiting routes. And as you can see, because this is an educational moment, um... She's not following the routes like exactly how I drew them down. It's not 100% following the routes exactly how they're seen. She, may, she puts her own twist on it, you know? She switches it up. If I go one way, she's like, well, I, I could follow the route or I could switch it up a little bit. And that's what she ends up doing. And that is what's most important to kiting. It's not the routes themselves. It's being adaptable. And yeah, she gave up there because she felt bad for me. <laughs> Okay, but now it is my turn for revenge against you, Giga. Ha ha ha. I'm going to use your own routes against you. And yeah, th these are actually like Giga's routes. She she joined the game way before me and, and she taught me a lot. Giga Sensei, I love you, but I'm gonna I, you made me feel bad, so now I have to try to kite you. So um, I, I waited there a little bit because the hunter wasn't exactly near my spawn. But anyway, he's back here now, and so I go through this area. This is what I'm talking about with the red light. See? I see the red light, so I vault. And then I go around and I loop it again. Just do a little looparoo. I come back through. Don't throw down the pallet. You gotta wait on that. Give that a little time. I see the hunter. He comes back, so I vault again. But how many times can I abuse this? Well, you know, let's see. Spoiler, I don't loop it. And instead I throw the pallet down. Uh, I do that because I'm not 100% certain I'm able to go and redo that loop. So, you know, I want to be careful. I, I come back over to the window. I do a little Valtaroni. And the hunter does a little Hopperoni. So I go over to this pallet. I actually do a little weird perfume thingy. I, I actually do that because I want to save the pallet as long as I can. It's not necessary as perfumer. It's just something I felt like doing at the time. And here's like more of the mind gaming with the light. The hunter hops over instead and I'm like, oh no, hunter Chan, please don't touch me. I wait here and then I get the stun. See, that's using that palette when you need to. Use that palette when you need to. Save that palette. I make my way over to this area now and I instantly throw down uh, this palette and this palette so I can do a little bit of mind gaming here. So I'm waiting for the hunter to break one. He breaks this palette so I go over to these two little palettes because I already used the palette in Grand Kite so I decided to make it to this area over here instead. So I, I get hit through the palette there. My mistake, my bad. Stinky me. And I go inside the main building and I have the option to go to the window. The stairs, I choose the stairs seeing as I think I have enough time. I fall down and what do I do? Throw that pallet! That's what I'm saying, baby! Throw that pallet down! Bazinga! Say it with me, boys. Bazinga! And this is really good because we come back up, we go towards the hole, and I have that pallet to use again. Except for... Yeah. I'm still a bit salty about that. Whatever. Whatever, Giga. I love you, but... You got lucky there. You got lucky. But it's fine. It's fine. What's important is that you understand the kiting routes and the educational purposes of which we were showing you. And also that I'm better than Giga because she made me feel bad. She made me feel bad, so please support me. She has 600 subscribers. I need to beat Giga or my fragile emotional ego is going to be destroyed. I don't have, I don't have any self-respect. I'm kind of a narcissist, but that's fine. So we actually kited around this area again. I waited for uh, Giga to come over here. I wanted to try the stair thing again. So I go back up and the pallet's already thrown in this scenario. So I use it for the speed boost. This usually works unless the hunter gets that, that hit like Giga did. It's fine. I'm fine. My heart. But yeah, anyway, what I'm saying is like what you would do from that point. I go over to the window and then I try to loop that area. Bazinga. 
So I come around. The hunter's pretty far off in the distance. And I'm like, hey, you know, I got some time. I can do another loop of Roni. So I come back in. I, I do a little jumps. And then from here, I decide to go over to one of these areas. I pick this area because I don't know. Look, she'll be looking pretty in this area today. No homo. But I go over here. Uh, little hoppy boy hops. And I die because I can't. And I'm trash. But that's fine. That's fine. Hey, you know what no one asked for? Priestess portal locations on this map. You know what I decided to do anyway? Priestess portal locations on this map. It do be that way some days. Honestly, I should probably just make a separate video, but I'm not gonna be that nerd who makes a priestess portal location video when there's like 20 of them up already originality my dudes you can hate me all you want but the one thing you can't deny is that i'm annoyingly original i think is that a compliment i don't know i mean hitler was original in what he did but no one really liked him so i could just be as bad as hitler it depends but for actual portal locations there's a pretty good one by this bed so say you just ran away from those two pallets and like you're going into the main building and you're either going to vault the window or go up the stairs well here's that portal right here so what you want to do in this one i just placed is go to the bed and aim it a little bit to the left so you're like you're coming out from this area you're kiting oh no ah you go through this portal and you have so much time especially if you body block because if you watched my body block guide, which shows all the body block locations in every single rank map, you would know that this is a brilliant body blocking area for the chair and for kiting in general. So you body block that area, the person who is in danger goes to that portal. Outstanding for them, they can just get away perfectly fine. Brilliant. Also, right here, my dudes, down portal, down portal. Why? You got two pallets, two for the price of one. Bazinga, you know how, how awesome that is? This is pretty cool. Look at this. So you're up here, you're near the little cipher area or whatever, and you're decoding. Well, or, or you need to kite. You can throw down that pallet and stun the hunter once he comes up through the portal. This is great. So I'm over here. I'm doing what I want to do. I'm kiting. Oh, the hunter is coming near me. So I get in this pallet. I wait. I go up. Now, the, the pallet would still be up at this point, and the hunter comes up through the portal. He's stunned. I wait, and then I stun him with the pallet. Amazing! Now, I'm up here to code, and I'm minding my own business. I'm tapping on that cipher, and then the hunter, he'll usually come up through the portal because he'll see it when he enters the building. So he'll usually go up there instead of the stairs. So I see him come up, and then I stun him with the pallet. And if he doesn't come up that area, then what I can do is I'm up near that cipher at the top, and then I just go down the portal. So, like, I'm up at the cipher at the top here, I go down the portal, and then I stun him with the pallet at the bottom. Bazinga, it's a mani- it's- it's a- yeah. amazing. Words are hard. When I- when I get excited, my words just jump out the window. But trust me. Trust me. Another one. So, this portal right here, this is, like, well-known. You probably know this portal. But, like, if you don't, uh, you know, here- here it is again, just in case you didn't know it. You can do this on every single side of the building. But yeah, not a lot of people know the bed portal. I haven't seen the bed portal a lot and the um, the two pallet up and down portal. I've seen it on like a lot of Chinese gameplays, which is where I've learned it. But I've, I see these portals, the one that I'm doing right now, I, I see these a lot. But they're still good, you know, when you have the option to do them. Just like sprinkle them around. And then there's this portal, which I mention only because it's kind of dangerous. A lot of people know this one, too. You go through here, and the reason I mention to be careful is because this is near one of the hunter spawn areas. So if you do that portal early game, the one that goes through the shack and the hunter sees you, you better be ready to kite. You just used one of your portals, and you're a priestess, so there's a good chance that you don't have knee-jerk reflex. Or, you, you pro if you're a priestess, you probably don't at all have, like, um, th the other one. The, win the window vaulting one, words. But yeah, so, you know, be careful on that portal.